Right. And he's done that as such. Shout out my man Chris Dixon, rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? He was another person who, um, Chris Dixon, he was nice in basketball from the city. Had crazy swag, dressed like I don't know what. Yeah. Somehow he transitioned from basketball and started to go into like music. And he was doing, um, you know, he was trying to get his music out. And I don't know what happened for real with him and Durant. I don't know how they like fell off or whatever because he's real cool with Kevin Durant at the time. But Cliff was right there. Mm -hmm. Cliff was right there. And, you know, he lost his life on his birthday in Atlanta. Not even from Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Got shot in Atlanta on his birthday having a party. That's crazy. You know, and that was that was wild to me. That also woke me up. It wasn't the yeah. first time I was awakened, but it really woke me up on how short life is. And, you know, you can be having all the things. You know, I erased all those pictures, honestly, because I wanted to start over this decade. Yeah. 2021. It's a new decade. It don't matter who I know or who I met. That don't matter to me no more. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm meeting so many more people that are the next layer if we're talking Adobe Photoshop terms, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Rob is the next layer to any graphic artist that I've met. You know, my man Suleiman S. Dot, you know, he's the next layer to Cole. Yeah, Cole, cool, but I got a cat. Y'all going to be like, oh, man, you should listen to him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's nice. Yeah. I have that guy. I know that guy. And I know he's going to be the next because I'm just following the pattern, Rob. You just follow the pattern. What what um the baby did, what yeah. Cole did. I watched what they did. I watched how they did it. And the common denominator was that they did it without any permission or apology. Mm -hmm. And they stuck to the they stuck to their brand. Right. Puff Daddy had to stick to you know how long he talked about bad boy before he got biggie? Right. He was trying to scream bad boy, and Bamas was like, Ain't I thought she was with Uptown. Yeah. They was, they was, nah, it's bad boy, baby. I got Craig Mack. Who's that? Flavor and yeah. Oh, okay. All right, all right, I got you. Got you. you still got Mary J. Blige and Jodeci, though, because I'm trying to book him. <sighs> yeah, I can get you Mary J. Blige. Yeah, I can get you Jodeci. But I got bad boy, baby. Remember, it's bad boy. <laughs> and he did the promotion with the Big Mac. And, you know, it's crazy. I had a chance to chop it up with Puff. It was very loud. Mm -hmm. but it was very brief. But I had a chance to chop it up. And in that loud, brief moment, I gave him one of my cars that had this logo on it. It was in 2009, Santos Party House, Manhattan. I gave him my card on the back. I said, man, I run NC. Like, it was really bold to say, right? Yeah. But he remembered that. And asked me when he came to Charlotte for uh, CIAA or something. I think my man Sporty Yodi was having a party. I was like, yo, yo, you remember Santos Party House? He was like, yeah, because that was the night that Idris Elba was there and this person was there. Like, he didn't really remember me. Yeah. He remembered receiving a card from a kid in the dark, out of the darkness and written on the back, I run in C. When we went outside that same night, because it's 2009, I learned something about Puff Daddy. I learned that he was already on the cuffs of whatever was about to be next, Rob. Yeah. When I walked outside, there was bumper stickers as far as I could see that had at I am Diddy. At this point in my life, I had never seen the at symbol, the at symbol in front of anything. You know what I'm saying? Maybe an email address. Like, but what is this at I am Diddy? There was people outside with the bumper sticker on their hat, the bumper sticker on their chest. Bumper stickers on the walls of buildings. Bumper stickers on the light posts. A week later, I read the New York Stock Exchange and it started talking about Twitter was growing. Mm. That was Diddy's Twitter tag. So he was ahead of he, it. He had 2009 on Twitter, bro. He was so game. what did I do? I want you to look up Soul Fever on Twitter. It exists because I said, let me get, let me go ahead, let me go ahead and lock it in. 2009. 2009, Twitter, Soul Fever, been on it. My, um, as soon as Instagram came out, 
grab the Soul Fever tag. No one can get it. Soon as, you know, Clubhouse is out, grab it over there. I think I use my real name over there, but at the end of the day, that's my brand. And any Snapchat, Soul Fever, everything, Soul Fever. He taught me that. Like, just that little, he didn't tell me to do it, but yeah. I could clearly see what he was doing. He was taking advantage of something that was free advertisement, and he took advantage of it first. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you learned that in your business class, too. Yeah. Find out what the, the curve is, what's about to be the next, and be the first one to sell it. Yeah. Find out what be the curve Be the first is. one to capitalize off of it. And then prime and, and then prime it. And Make prime, it prime, yeah. of it. To the point where they see it and it's already ingrained in their brain. Like like you said, the bumper sticker, you probably never forgot that. That at I am Diddy. I can't forget it. I can't I think it's still Diddy. He, yeah, he just branded he branded so hard. And another thing about Diddy is that they he you couldn't find the hours when he was asleep. Like yeah. you know, I'm sure the dude slept. He has to sleep. But it wasn't when you were asleep. Yeah. It was systematically put together that way. Yeah. I can't sleep when you sleep. I get more work. Like, like right now, even now, man, like, I love my family. But it's certain things that I have to just spend an hour sitting on a toilet seat doing. Mm hmm Call it what you want. But <laughs> we sell mattresses on our phone. So I'm talking to people while they on their air mattress in the middle of the night trying to get qualified for a mattress and like, I'm not going to go through another night. Don't worry. I got yeah. you. You won't have to sleep another night on that air mattress. <laughs> and I heard, um, so I pay attention to, to habits that I guess you would say successful people because everybody's idea, I mean, everybody's idea of success is relative, right? But when we talk about monetary success, you talking about uh, Meek Mill was telling the story about Robert Kraft because you know Meek Mill has surrounded himself around billionaires because he said, I'm a millionaire, but what do I want to be? I'm going to be a billionaire. So he said they were on a flight back from Vegas. And Meek Mill, it was like, I think like 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, somewhere around that time. Meek's tired because they've been up all night doing whatever, right? Meek sleep, but Robert Kraft is on the phone, I mean, on, on emails, closing deals and all type of stuff. And so that's what made Meek kind of wake up and be like, yo, this is a billionaire. And he's on, the, he's on emails when everybody else is asleep. So I got to figure out how to, how, how to kind of adopt that mentality because. Bro, the stock market starts. You can start trading at 4.30 a.m., bro. I see that's The New York Stock Exchange, that's early trading. That's where you're early trading. New York Stock Exchange, of course, opens at 9, 9, whatever, whenever the bell rings or whatever. Yeah. But them the people that just came to work to physically trade in – Wall Street, Wall Street, nine o'clock, but you could trade on the market for 35 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You might be able to trade for something and sell it by nine o'clock and made $300. Crazy. Shout out, shout out to the day traders, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that, that's one thing I'll say. Like, I never stop. I'm never going to stop being an avid learner. Like, do we have a whole conversation on just the stock market? Yeah. And how these dividends, you know what I'm saying, you know, <laughs> hey, we'll, hey, we'll have hey. A, hey, we'll do another uh another episode and we'll go into that. I gotta bring my guy. I got I, I promised him I would his name is his name is um I don't know what we're gonna call him. We'll call him Cali, you know what I'm saying? He he likes to go by nicknames, you know what I'm saying? Can't give his real name. But yeah. that's all he does. He's a day trader. Let's do and it. And he trades so much that they tell him how much he can trade in the day. Oh, they put a stipulation on it. Yeah. Now, there's cryptocurrency right now. Yeah. There's day trading, but he's trading, like, you know, AT&T, Walmart, like, McDonald's, Foot yeah. Locker. If you got the money, you can buy shares. He got you with that. But we're always watching. Like, when um Supreme was purchased by Vans. Yeah. The stock market didn't really go crazy. But why would you not buy some Vans stock? Right. When people stand in line, when every time there's a release date for Supreme, they sell out within an hour. And then right. people resell a hat that costs $67 for $150. And a company just bought it. Yes, buy those shares now while the shares are low. I don't know what the shares in, in Vans are now, but I mean, that's his job. You know, once again, stay in your lane. 
I pay him to trade my money for me. Yeah. And he does it very well, but he has soul fever. He specializes in that. I don't have to worry about him doing anything else. This is what he do. So we can get him on the episode, right? Yeah, definitely. I'm going to work on that. I don't right. know. How, he, might, he might have a blurred out face guy, you know. That's cool. Hey, look, we got to disguise <laughs> his voice. He got to be. <laughs> yeah, blurred out face. Like a non disguise voice. That's all good. Hey, that's, that's, uh, I would actually like to do that. That's pretty dope. I, yeah. actually. But it's crazy. We talked to him, him and I, we spoke on it. And I said, man, look, the knowledge you're giving me, if we just did this like 30 minutes every morning, we just told people what to do. And they don't know what to do. This hundred dollars. They don't know what to do is because you let a hundred dollars to the bank. It's just 108 cents. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a hundred dollars with eight cents, but yeah. you can put over here and turn a hundred dollars into three and then put that hundred, then, you know, take that. Like, yeah, I, I, I like to shop at Saks, man, you know, and, I like expensive things, and I learned very quickly that I didn't have enough money for the things that I like. <laughs> I also learned that if you can count the amount of money that you have, you don't have enough money. Right. And, and like Nick said, he started hanging around millionaire billionaires. Well, I, I said, let me let me put my circle, let me put this myself in a circle with some millionaires. And these people were into cryptocurrency, cybersecurity. They were into um, like the unicells. Uh, they were into cooking. You know, you know, I mean, during the pandemic, people who had restaurants started making more money than when their restaurants were open because of DoorDash and takeout. Oh, no, you can't sit here. We don't got to deal with your attitude and fill up your water and sweet tea, but you can still pay full price for this meal. Yeah. Thank you very much. You know, and it was, it's, it's still happening, you know, because people are still, they're accustomed to it now. And yeah. people are able to make money going grocery shopping for other people. Right. It's so... You know what? I got a homeboy that was on that before it was before it became a big thing, mm-hmm. but he didn't follow through with it. He he, mm-hmm. I feel like he should have stayed with it, and it would have you know paid off in the end. But man, I had a homeboy that got into the Uber drink early, started to outsmart the system. Said, "Okay, I got people that got driver's license but no cars. I got people that need rides in Glenwood Avenue on a Saturday night." Is always loaded with drunk people that don't want to drive. Yeah. So he bought four minivans. Damn. Paid hourly wages to his drivers. But it was Uber. Yeah. Well, Do you think a group of drunk you think a, a group of drunk people that go to NC State are really care who that Uber driver is if that, that door open up and can take not, them home? They just want to get not, home. not at all. <laughs> they just want to get home, man. So, so, so Jonathan, that's what he named. His name ain't even Jonathan, but Jonathan was the favorite Uber driver all over, you know, for the party people, you know what I'm saying? Because you could throw up in his minivan, he didn't care. <laughs> Smoking in the minivan, he didn't care. But he was always there for you yeah. every Saturday night. And then there was some people that would just stop him. Hey, hey, I want to ride from you. I heard about this place. Because he, then he got smart because he hired a consultant. Yeah, and the consultant said, "Put your logo on the side of your door, just a little magnet." And we bought some like sixty dollar magnets that he could put on his car door, and people would recognize his, his logo, and he would have lights inside the the minivan, and they would stop him. Give me your Uber tag. I'm sending you money. Man, forget Uber. What's yeah. your cash out? Let me just give the money to you. Bro, that's uh, that's my you know? next that's my next venture, man. Consultant. Cause I'm already you already you already doing it you already yeah. doing it man that's what I'm saying I already give away the free the free uh the free knowledge mm-hmm. you know but it's but you a- you know think about it your next venture you're three less than three years from retirement yeah if you start now and really get some seasoned companies under your belt that like the your McDonald's or American Airlines or you know you know I say reach big you know what I'm saying you 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 got Air Force knowledge. Yeah, you can consult the Air Force, but the Air Force ain't gonna just hire anybody. They are gonna hire somebody that can win the bid. So you gotta get your Dun and Bradstreet's number, and and you gotta know what Dun and Bradstreet is. You gotta know how to get a bid. You know what I'm saying? You gotta know how to do a request for proposal. You gotta know these things. So like you said, YouTube was your 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 friend. You already are. You gotta say it as if it is. Yeah, I am a consultant. You know what I'm saying? Let it let, let just, I am fresh. Man, you know what I'm saying? 
manifest. Yeah, because it, it, it is what it is, man. Like, I remember when um I was first started at the radio station, Chris Brown was just popping. No, nah, it was a little bit after that. But I remember Chris Brown came out with running. Mm -hmm. Joel Santana on the feature, right? Yeah. Around the same time, No Letting Go was like the number one song in the country, Wayne Wonder. And I was in a meeting with the radio station people and they like, you know, we're about to do a concert and we're gonna bring somebody in. Everybody was voting for bringing um, Wayne Wonder to E. Smith. I'm like, no, they don't wanna see him. You know what I'm saying? You know, I like the song too, but nobody wants to see this skinny Jamaican man yeah. singing no letting go. Like, that was not, they want to crump. These are high school kids. Yeah. And they look, they're like, how do you know? Man, I will teach there. I'm there every day. I know how they dance. I know what they into. And they don't want that. Well, Chris Brown was such a new artist that people was kind of skeptic. Like, should we take the chance? I don't know. They didn't take that shot. They didn't take that chance. And his price started to go up because after after, after that, the yo came out and never a right time to say goodbye and all these other hits. Yeah. And every time he got more hits, his price started going up and he wasn't doing nothing for free no more. Yeah. So that, that window of opportunity was missed because you didn't act. You didn't believe me. So I was like, wow, I predicted something. Mm -hmm. I believe you, Kevin. Do what you do. So the next chance I had was Kanye West. At the time, it was Kanye West, Through the Wire, and you had uh, 50 Cent in the club. I was like, nah, Kanye, man, you get to Kanye. We're going to do Kanye. You no, know, he did the beats for Jay. Yo, he about to be like that. The only defense that the person had was like, nah, man, Flex dropped the bomb on this song and played it seven times in a row. We playing 50 Cent. I was like, dad, you know, dad, yeah. telling you, man, I'm telling you, he ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Kanye West comes to Fayetteville, and because the powers that be did not listen to me, I'll just go ahead and say, I don't think the, the most time was put into the promotion that was done for him. And they had the great Kanye West handing out turkeys in the parking lot of Crazy Dave's. It's former, you know, it's not, no longer there, but it was a strip club. Damn. Yeah, like you know, I thought it could have been better than that. You know, a little bit, a little bit more thought could have got put into that for Kanye. Yeah, you know, just a little bit, just a little bit. Now of Kanye back. also, yeah, he also had John Legend with him that same day, and yeah. no one knew who John was. Um, but what I'm saying is, they start. Everybody starts from somewhere. If they believe in themselves that much, because I remember Kanye kicking everybody out of the room because they were making noise while he was trying to record his drops. And I was the one recording the drops, and he told everybody to leave. And it was just him and I in there. And I was like, Dad, this dude is really serious about even saying his name. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. He takes everything a little too serious. But then as I saw his progression, I knew I was there from the beginning. So, no, I did not have to be with good music, family, day in and day out. I had to roll with Rockefeller day in and day out because of the technology that was afforded to me and that being the avid learner, I was able to follow Kanye's career all the way till now when he's doing gospel music, Sunday service. And I was able to relate. I've been a fan of Kanye since he came out because shit, I was on the same thing. Mm -hmm. I love my mama too. Right. I like, I like about things I can't afford. We all self-conscious. I'm just the first to admit it. Right. That line was for me. You know what I'm saying? From the beginning, like, matter of fact, Kanye came through with a plan. He said the first album is going to be college dropout, then late registration, then I'm going to do this, graduation, then I'm going to do this one, you know what I'm saying? And he had this, this, the clearest vision of who he was and was going to be to the world. And that impacted me so much, bro, because it was like, you don't even give a shit what somebody thinks. Yeah. If you really know who you are, if you really know your superpowers, and when I tapped in to my superpowers, when I really started to live these words, when I really started to do that, I tapped in. It was like the matrix. It was no turning back. Yeah. And I saw that. 
I didn't go right out of application and get interviewed to get on the radio, bro. It wasn't, I walked in the store, I mean, the station, I had one name, I had a Redskin jersey on. I wanted to wear a Redskin jersey because I was a Redskin fan. The program director at the time was a Redskin fan too. Mm. Stars he of gave America. me an internship Stars off of the America. face of a Redskin jersey, bro. Yeah. Then, then he leaves the position. Like he just leaves or something. I don't know if he got fired or what. He just leaves, but I'm still interning. The new program director comes in and he's like, yeah, I went to Fayetteville State. I go to Fayetteville State right now. We friends. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Did we just become best friends? We just became best friends. There we go. <laughs> and i never forget it. It was Thanksgiving. Somebody didn't want to work their shift. So I worked their shift. Christmas Eve, somebody didn't want to work their shift. I worked their shift. Christmas Day, somebody didn't want to work their shift. I worked their shift. New Year's Eve. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year. I'm in there. That program director comes in. Shout out, Uzi. He comes in the room and said, like, I thought you was from D.C. You ain't want to go home for Christmas? Little did he know my mom's from North Carolina, and she was already down here for Christmas. Yeah. So I was straight. I'm leaving Christmas like, yo, I got to go, y'all. Thanks for the presents. Y'all can listen to the radio. I'm about to be on it. <laughs> and it was just like that. He was like, man, you know what? You showed a lot of, you know, sacrifice. Every other college kid would want to go home yeah. for the break. You stayed here. I don't know what you did to survive. Not even asking. But I see a lot of you, a lot of me and you. He gave me that speech. Mm -hmm. And that was that. Months went by, Rob. And all of a sudden, because you know they, they got the Russ Parr morning show, right? Somebody has to be there to press the button. And that was the breakfast club. But somebody had to be there to press the button so that the whole Fayetteville could hear the morning show. Mm -hmm. That's Monday through Friday. And then on Saturday, they might give you a shift. So you're working six days a week. Mm. I never forget the lady that did the five days a week morning show. Got to get up. I don't know where she drove from, but you better have that ass up in there at 5 o'clock in the morning, getting yeah. ready to press that button. Like, uh-uh. <laughs> uh, on time, too. On time. And then you got to run the commercials. You got to run the weather. You got to do all these types of things, right? Yeah. Um, one day she just had enough, and she was like, yo, I need a break. I work working Monday through Friday, and I got to work on Saturday and Sunday. I don't have no break. All right. Oh, all right. That's what we say. Like, what's somebody yeah. going to, oh, right. oh, you need a break? <laughs> oh, you, oh, you need some time off? You sad? You tired? Mm. Bye. Right. This kid right here, he can do what you just did, and I don't even got to pay him yet. Yeah. Bye-bye. So I got the radio show, and I was on Saturday mornings, 10 to 3, called it Saturday Morning Cartoons, because you're in your car listening to your tunes. Cartoon. And I realized that that was a prime time slot. This young man just gave up a prime time slot because she was tired. She couldn't sit in one spot for five hours and talk on the radio. But you loved it. You wanted to really do this. But then when it got like a job and it became tiring and daunting and I'm over this shit, you let it slip away. And yeah. you had this young, eager kid that was like, all he wanted to do was have something to do in Fayetteville because there was nothing to do. Yeah. And if I could do this, that's what I do. And then I didn't stop there because 10 to 3, that's the car wash hours. Mm. That's the going to the mall hours. Yeah. That's the going to the barbershop hours. That's right. going to the hair salon, nail salon hours. I was talking to every party person in the Ville, my dude. <laughs> you was like, mm, Birdman hand rub. I got yeah, it. Yeah, let me tell you, let me tell you what you're gonna be doing tonight. We got yeah. the yin yang twins over here. Yeah. I know I know you heard the commercials about somebody being over there. But yeah. since Kevin put in on this, you got to go see the yin yang twins over here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I would take my chances. I would get reprimanded. Yeah, yo, hey, did they pay for that commercial? They pay for that? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pay. Yeah, I was I smart that. about it. Yeah. Yeah, I got smart about it. And I straddled the fence as much as I could to line my pockets as much as I could without embarrassing my mother. Right. By being caught up in any type of payola bullshit or any type of scams or any type of scandals like that or going to jail or anything. I didn't want to embarrass mom. Yeah. That was my only motivation. So 
that I took that, bro. Like, like I, somebody slipped. If I'm running a race and the person beside me slipped, am I going to stop and try to help him up? It's the Olympics. I'm trying to get the gold medal. Yeah. I'm sorry you slipped. We could talk about it once I'm, you know, finished the ceremony when they adorn me with roses and play my country's <laughs> national anthem. <laughs> bro. <laughs> then I'll come and say, hey, man, you're okay? It's like too bad. Nasty spill on the lap, man. Yeah. Don't worry, you maybe next year. <laughs> but I'm the champion now, you know what I'm saying? And and like that mentality is, and I want to touch on it, be like, because you know we're we're in a transition of power right now. Mm-hmm. We're going from Donald Trump to Joe Biden, and y'all put Trump in the office. Like, y'all mad at the dude, but you let him get in there. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, 75 million people, like he said, did vote for him again. So people still like him. Yeah. But we didn't vote. Trump didn't get voted in the office four years ago. Trump got voted in the office during The Apprentice and the ratings that he was getting. Mm. Trump got voted in the office when he was buying his shirts and his neckties. When the rappers were shouting him out, I'm at the Trump International, ask for me. Trump got his votes when he leased space to Gucci stores and Louis Vuitton stores. This was just the final act. And he said something today. We will be back. Yeah. Yeah. He got two daughters and two sons that are just as ferocious in business as he is. And Lil' Baron, don't forget about Lil' Baron. They're coming back, bro. Yeah, they're gonna be back, it. and I'm not even, I'm not even a supporter. He he uses the drunken master type philosophy, like I'm dumb. I don't know what I don't, I don't know. Okay. You know, George Bush, George W. Bush was very good at it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess uh, I don't know. Uh, what's my favorite number? Uh, yellow. Like I don't know. Yeah, like yeah. I'm gonna throw you off. Like, come on, man. My dad was the president. You know, I ain't yeah. do nothing like that. Like, my dad was a billionaire. You know, I ain't do nothing. Like, look. I'm the elected official because I had the most money to run. And I got these people to, you know, I found a core group of people that were underserved, underheard, and I riled them up and they voted for me. Right. And then in a flinch, just to show you that I still got it, watch what I do on this Capitol Hill. Right. (laughs) I'm going to have a rally. What the fuck was about to happen? You think after a rally? Yeah, you know when you when you have those before football games, the football team goes out in wild abandonment to go hit somebody. Yeah, when you do those, when you do a pep rally before any type of game, it's to rile up everybody so they can go forth and defeat the enemy. Yeah, that's why you have rallies. Yeah, so to have that, you know what you're doing. At the end of the day, people are getting smarter. People are reading more. People have, you know, it's not just conspiracy theories. They're really seeing how, wow, I work all week for the week to end, and yeah. then I spend all the money I made all week, forcing me to have to go back to work the next week until I die? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, what kind of life is that? People, people are getting smarter, and people are seeing through that. I've noticed a lot more people are like, man, but you know what I think COVID – kind of force people into the entrepreneurial mindset too. So people are really understanding, hey, mm-hmm. I don't have to do it that way. And then I think like it's, it's going to help you in your consultation because there are so many entrepreneurs who don't know the next step. Like they, they got their LLC or they got their S Corp. They got their business acumen together on paper. They solid right there, like that right there. But how do I get people to come in the door? How do I get people to buy? How do I deal with the customer that's irate? How do I do this? You know, I, I you know, I, I need somebody. I might just need somebody to vent to. Yeah. I might need somebody, you know, um, to talk it over and maul it over with. And that could be you. And they would happily pay for your services because this is America. There's only two things you can sell, goods or services. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people sell both. I sell mattresses. That is a good. Yeah. We have everything that you need. Brand new mattress starting at $69. <laughs> <laughs> hey. You know, um, but I also have services. 
hey, do you want to grow your company to two million? You want to go from two million to four million? You want to go from one store to 14 locations? Do you want to, you know, take your graphic design business to the next level? Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, Soul Fever helped you 10 years ago. Yeah. And if your business because you already got the website, you got everything. And if I were to write my book or have my website and put it out there, a quote from you would mean so much that other graphic designers that are just getting into business would say, well, let me give them a call too. You know, now with that, you, you got to slow down. That's why my shit is hidden. There was a movie called um, The Inside Man. Mm-hmm. You heard of The Inside Man with Jodie yeah. Foster and Denzel yep. Washington? Yeah, I've seen it. That's one of my favorite right. movies, actually. Yeah, yeah, one of my favorite. You know what I'm saying? Because the position that Jodie Foster played, her character, Yeah. everybody didn't need to know what she was there to do. You know, everybody don't need to know what I'm, why the mayor hired me. You just know that I'm here to do this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. At times, I get caught in between consultation and being a store manager. Versus being a managing partner. I got to put on different hats, even with Super Master Shop. I'm consulting my friend to grow his business. But in doing that, I got to spend time to do his business. Yeah. So it only made sense to be like, wow, if I'm going to help these companies get the millions of dollars, millions of dollars in BMWs, millions of dollars in sneakers, why can't I help my own friend sell millions of dollars in mattresses? So it worked out because I've, I've, I'm at the level now, bro. Like, I'm about to be 40. So I'm at that level now. Like, yo, how can I simplify everything that I was doing? Because we were doing a lot of running around back, you know, like they say, running with you in, in place or your wheels spinning. And as much as I like to smile, it was a lot of pain and tears behind those smiles some of those times when I didn't have it together and I didn't have all the answers why. And I used to wonder, why am I still here in Fayetteville? And then uh, 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 Wale would come from D.C. and they need me to work the Carolinas. Can yes. you work the Carolinas for us? So, yeah, it, don't don't come home yet because we try to make Wale big. So I need you to work the Carolinas for me. Yeah. All right, I can do that. And then when I think I'm about to leave again, hey, yo, you, what city you say he's from? This a cat named J. Cole about to blow, bro. You might not want to leave that city for a second. And... We blew right along with him, like, like there's this, and then it happened again in Charlotte with the baby. Yeah. Oh, so you was, part, you was part of that too? No, I'm not a part of anything that the baby has going on. Yeah. I have been hired by South Coast Marketing for okay. other ventures in the past. Gotcha. And with that, that's the great Arnold Taylor. We got to call him the great Arnold Taylor. And shout out my man Craig Martin, who was on the music side. But, you know, Arnold Taylor was the first person to roll up with the 300, um, Chrysler 300, you know? Yeah. The big chunky joint. Like, when it first came out, they were charging yeah. $30,000, $40,000 for it. <laughs> I never forget, he used to come, and I would love to see him because we knew he was going to get food. Right. <laughs> Why? Because he was a record rep. Yeah. yeah. He was coming to tell us the new Chris Brown record to spin or the new Mariah Carey song to sell out or the new John Legend. You know, he would come through to say that. Um, and I think he used to work with Interscope and the other couple other ones. But I know he had Yo Gotti at one time. Okay. So he was working Yo Gotti. And, of course, Yo Gotti was coming out with CMG9, you know, the mixtapes and everything. Mm-hmm. And... It's like Yo Gotti got right in between when Gucci and Jeezy was beefing. And it was no, and you know, T.I. was still out, but he was doing movies and stuff like that. So Tip was like not as good as Jeezy and Gotti with the drama mixtapes and all that stuff. Yeah. And the Zaytoven beats. And Yo Gotti was able to get up in there and make a name for himself with the whole cocaine music thing and blew up, right? Yeah. Arnold Taylor was one of the forces behind that. Fast forward, my campaign goes so strong, racks on racks on racks, who am I talking about? Future comes out. Mm -hmm. I'm at 935, who's bringing Future to the club? Arnold Taylor. So I'm like, wait a second, is he, 
is he about to do the same thing? And I don't think I think it might have been Future first. I think Future came before Yo Gotti's bigness. I think it was. I think it was Future first. So like yeah. he started doing the Future, then he did the same thing he did with Future with Yo Gotti. So when Baby the Baby came around, he signed him. All he did was do the same thing he did with Future, same thing he did with Yo Gotti, and say, "Hey, God, the Baby, are you willing to do this?" The same and thing. The Baby said, "Yep." I'm willing to do whatever the fuck I need to do to get on. <laughs> Bro, he developed and, a standard repeatable process for, for all those guys he had funneling through. And here's the, here's the thing about it. Since the baby has gotten big, I haven't had an exchange with Arnold. Because as, you know, you get big, you know, you don't check DMs and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I wasn't in his call history. We weren't friends. We didn't hang out and when I went to Charlotte and nothing like that. But I remember being at a basketball game, walking through the tunnel and he was like, oh, what up, K-Mac? All right, cool. That's all I need to know. I just need to know that you know who I am. Yeah. So that when I come see you, because I have an opportunity for us to both make some money, that I'm solid. Yeah. I do remember in the early days, early stages of the baby gaining a lot of traction. And I was like, I think it was like when I, um, yeah, yeah, when they were doing all that, yeah. you know, that's when he started like, oh, oh, snap, this dude about to really get it. I remember reaching out to get prices, and I knew that I was only able to get those numbers. Mm-hmm. I was only able to get those contacts. I was only able to get those conversations because of way back when, yeah, having a relationship that, no, you don't have to talk every day. Yeah. No, you don't have to be in somebody's face every day. But if the relationship was started genuinely, yeah, you was genuinely doing what you had to do, and you genuinely nurtured it, like I called you or I saw you and I said what's up, or I did whatever I did, I was solid one of the times that we had a chance to work together. First of all, you ain't going to have nobody come and try to hate on you. But if somebody did try to come and say, hey, Rob, hey, yo, K Mac, man, he hating on you, bro. Yeah. I don't really sound. I know I ain't talked to him in 10 years, but why would he do that? Like, yeah. I gave K Mac his first column in the internet radio magazine. Yeah. I gave K Mac this flyer and that flyer. I helped this brother. Help, I helped Brand so Fever. Like, why would it, it wouldn't even make sense because our relationship is that strong and we haven't even spoken in 10 years. Yeah. But it was that strong because it was that solid. And you don't have to, you got to go around making these relationships, but you got to concentrate on yourself and being a solid individual. Those nights, bro, I would cry, bro, so so hard. Like, I did not want to drive to the airport. I believe. You know what I'm saying? I you know what it's like too. to drive to the airport at 4.30 in the morning? In the morning? morning? Yeah, that's the sacrifice, man. To, to pick up somebody or drop somebody off. But guess what? Kevin Peck, who was Drew Hill's manager and now just Cisco's manager, Kevin know me yeah. because he knew I made sure I got you back to that flight, bro. You know, um, I remember going to Atlanta one time. I got some tickets. I got blessed with some Redskins tickets to an Atlanta Falcons game. And I called my man D-Map. Um, and was like, yo, because I was calling people I knew in Atlanta, like, you want to go to the game? You know, I got four tickets to my man Danny because he's a big Falcons fan. We left out of North Carolina, drove six hours, got to the tailgate. And my man Danny's like, yo, I'm a, I'm a Falcons fan. I've never been to a Falcons game. And, bro, we in this joint. He never forgot that. Mm. Also, D-Map, who I gave the other ticket to, told me, bro, I grew up in Atlanta, lived in Atlanta all my life. I've never been in this building, never been to a game. No one's ever given me a ticket to come to a game. d Matt went on to design merchandise for Magic City. Damn, I know he got that money. Did a collaboration with Pleasures Hmm. for Magic City. Has done other collabs for... Kenny Burns. Matter of fact, Kenny Burns' whole collection is D Map. Damn. D Map's making it. Bro, I'm going to tell you. Like, I pay that attention. Crazy. I pay, I pay attention to all the tastemakers, man. I, I pay attention to everybody that's been doing stuff. 
you included. Like, I watch how y'all move. I watch the moves y'all make. And I try to incorporate it in my own way. So, like, Kenny Burns, I saw Kenny Burns a long time ago making moves. And the funny thing is, you never know. Everything comes in timing. That's what I learned, too. But once you learn things and implement them in your own way, shit come back around, comes back around. Full circle, bro. Like, like, you know, real talk, man. When I first had the opportunity to meet Kenny, for real, I got kicked out of a conference trying to get this other girl into the conference. Man. Doing, like, some sticky finger shit. And I took, like, one of the badges. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, yo, here you go. Yo, they told me they took my badge and her badge. Come to find out, they didn't want her nowhere around that. Like, she was already a taboo. Oh. And I let her, and I, and I hooked her up. I did what I make other people do. She did that to me. She uh, she made me assume. And when you have assumptions, you know, assumptions can kill you, you know? So yeah. I assumed that she was good. Yeah. But nah, she wasn't. And I let her in the door, and they were like, where you get this badge from? And they like they did the process of elimination. Only place you could have got that badge from, from was this dude that we really don't know they must have gave it to her. They kicked me out of the conference, bro. No Man. lie. And like Kanye was there. Kenny was there. It was very embarrassing, but I had to like leave. I mean, yeah. no one knew I got kicked out of me, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can talk about it now. But I left the conference like, bro, I got kicked out of a conference. It was like a hip hop conference because I let somebody in the door. Like, it's crazy, man. Stupid, man. But I learned from it. Yeah. Don't take nothing that ain't yours. Yep. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't let, don't, if you are privileged enough to be on the inside, don't talk yourself out of the room. Shut your mouth up. Be listen and watch. Be a fly on the wall. Yeah. Just absorb all you can. And I know in my mind, I would have been farther than I was had I not been kicked out of that concert and I was able to maybe have a sit down with Kanye because, you know, I got kicked out, but I'd already had a team, and my man Kid was already there. And yeah. Kid was like, yo, Kanye freestyle with me, man. I freestyle with him. And I was like, word, that's cool. In my mind, I'm thinking, like, I don't even know who Kanye West is. Like, who was that? Yeah. Um, but Kanye was there at the music conference. And Kanye at that time had an air about him, like, y'all don't know who I am? I don't see this Rockefeller chain? You know? like That's like, how you got to carry yes. He, But uh, he was a star already. Yeah. And that's the only thing I can tell, like, manifest it by speaking it, because it's power of life and death in the tongue. Yeah. Sometimes I'm, I refrain from saying anything, especially if it's going to take the energy to a level that you're not ready for, and I damn sure don't have the energy to meet, match with you. Yeah. So I say nothing sometimes. Because it doesn't require me to say anything. Yeah. You know, it's, it's your life. It's my life. And guess what? My life is going this way. And if I don't say anything, I'm going to be good. But it can not saying something can hurt you, too. Because yeah. you got to speak up sometimes. You got to let them know that you're in a room and that you got an idea. Hey, maybe we should do this. And then that idea really works. And now, hey, kid, you got any more ideas? Yeah. That's what happened. I think that's what really happened around with that Chris Brown, the whole Kanye thing, because I was like, really dead set, like, yo, Chris Brown, Chris Brown, tell you. And then Kanye, Kanye, Kanye. And then both of them became mega superstars that are still influential to this day. Yeah. So that drives you know, that I was, to you. Yeah, yeah I'm, on, I'm on the bus with Chris Brown's mom. Like, yeah, he's he got a lot of talent, man. He's going to really go far. <laughs> you know, his right. mama. His mama, you know what I'm saying, why he talking to little girls, you know, because he's a little boy. <laughs> You know, you're 15, 16, you know, you're going to let them. Y'all y'all stay by the bus now. Yeah. Y'all stay by the bus. <laughs> Baby, babysitting. Babysitting a little bit. Yeah, and I think, you know, they will all sneak off. And yeah. Chris Brown, you found a way to sneak off. And I think he might have used me talking to his mama to sneak off one time, one time. But it was, these were genuine relationships. And she was genuinely trying to get her son to the next level. And, and I see it happening again and again and again. Every time I meet new people, yeah. Every time I meet new people, they have a dream. And they might not know that I care about dreams. They might not know that 
I have resources that can help their dream. So I sit back, don't say nothing, and see how hard they're working their dream. Mm -hmm. You know, like the hours that we're spending right now, I could be cooking for my family. I could be doing other things. Yeah. I'm sacrificing this. It's really a lot of time. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of things, Brian talked to you in 10 years. This is a, we got to catch up. We had to catch up. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you doing this and I'm doing that. Like, how to go from music to mattresses and why? Please yeah. tell me now. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I know people don't understand it, but I signed up for a three year consultation for a million dollar company. That wasn't a million dollar company when I signed up. Yeah. And I said, look, we're going to get the million. And we got the 1.4. Next year, 2.6. I'm in the third year of the three-year vision for 14 stores. Damn. Once the third year happens, if I disappear, no one's going to be mad. Right. No one's going to be like, oh, man, I heard it was a guy named Kevin that used to work here. Get yeah, he doesn't work anymore. He, you know, what happened to him? We got what? No one's going to ask because no one asks. Hey, I don't want to listen to this radio station without K Mac being on there. Yeah. Hey, I don't want to buy these sneakers from Foot Locker if K Mac don't work it. Hey, you know what? I don't want to buy this BMW if K Mac can't sell it to me. Yeah. Hell no, nah, that shit is not happening because people still, the beat goes on. And that's what I was taught by all my OGs. But yeah. with or without you, it's going to be a Foxy 99. With yeah. or without you, it's going to be a CIAA tournament. It's going to be a Foxy uh, Foot Locker. It's going to be this. So don't think that you are making this happen. Yeah. It's gonna be uh, it's happening way before you and way after you. Yep. It's gonna be mattresses that start at sixty nine dollars, right? Yeah, super mattress, super mattress shop dot com. Super mattress shop dot com. Super mattress shop dot com. Three convenient locations right now. We're in Fayetteville, Raleigh, Charlotte, and a fourth location is on the way, very very soon. Um, I'm very proud of this man because I was able to, like you said, all the hustles. I was a scatterbrained kid that no one could pin down and and figure out and be like, what do you want to do in life? And I was like, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. is, is that a good answer? That's not a good answer? Okay. Well, let me, just, let me break it down. I have witnessed people that are doing whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. And I want to be like those people. I can't help you ain't met those people yet. Yeah. I met that consultant with the Rolex. It wasn't bust down nothing. I met him riding through the parking lot while we were supposed to be closed. Everything lines up, man. But but I wanted to sell a car so bad, I roll up on him. Yeah. After hours, you know what right? I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, you thought you oh you thought we was closed. <laughs> oh, you thought we was closed. <laughs> <laughs> he went, I went big head. What you want? What's we'll up? You know, can I go for a test drive? But I really got into everything that I did and um I posted this. Of a of day, you know, say like somebody said, successful people make hard things simple, mm -hmm. simplify them. And I've thought about one of my, uh, you know, rest in peace, Dr. John Cherry, Uncle John, as I called him, grew up. He said, organization is God's plan to simplify our life. And you know, like I got this organizer right here, you know, with. Every date in here. We get one of these a year. And it's up to you. We had the beginning. It's up to you to organize every day for this year. Even if it don't happen, you wrote now that this is what I plan to be doing on March 9th, my birthday. This is what I plan to be doing on uh, this, this for my anniversary. This is what I plan to be doing for Christmas next year. We're yeah. going to be in Disneyland for Christmas next year. Because why? We've made so much money in mattresses. That fourth quarter, because we're talking that way. That's how millionaires talk. We talk about first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. Yeah. We don't say millions. We just say 1.6 and 2.6. <laughs> you know what they're talking You don't need to be around a million. That's what they say. Like, hey, okay, look. I, I get it. You know what they said? And, and they said, hey, look, if you do better than you did this year, we're not going to Disney World. We're going to Disneyland. <laughs> That's how millionaires talk. The, the, the store managers and all their family. Now, 
I was like, great. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Just because he, and this is all because he wants to go to L.A. He just like to go to L.A., you know? Like, all right. Yeah. I, ain't, I don't go to L.A. like that. I go, I've been, I was a kid. It was cool. San Diego, I went there for the zoo. LA I mean, cool. but I feel like, I feel like when I go to like beaches and you yeah. ever go stay at a hotel at a beach and it's like nasty, like, I yeah. think everybody stays here. That's yeah. how I feel about places that everybody wants to go. If everybody wants to go there, then it's worn out. And it's, yeah. it's, it's trendy at this point. And when you are part of the trendsetters, when you are, like you say, a tastemaker like Kenny Burns, who is the lifestyle specialist, who said if I could find him a pair of shoes that he really, really wanted, then I could be the lifestyle specialist. I never found no shoes because they never came back out. But, you know, he got them eventually. I think they got them somewhere. But he was very loose with the term. Yeah. He was – why? Because I could not be him. He knew there was no way. Yeah. And on God's green earth, you could be me. Yeah. Just like I know there's no way that you could be K-Mac. And it's not to be haughty or boastful or any way. I'm proud of the accomplishment I did. Yeah, what you do? But guess what? I can't take you back to when Duce was started and Brian Axelrod had three cases of Duce and the Ritz Carlton and couldn't find no damn ice. Yeah. Okay, I got you. <laughs> We're at a hotel. I'll be right back. Hey, y'all, can I get some ice? <laughs> oh, what you gonna put it in? I don't know. <laughs> put it in these trash cans. Put some trash bags in this, this trash, trash can, can and fill it up with ice with your ice machine because you're the Rich Carlton. And then I come back. Hey, Brian, I got some ice. Yo, where'd you find ice? Don't worry about it. You got ice. You're welcome. <laughs> I did it for the Duce. And that's how I got on with Duce. That's how I got into the concert. That's how I got, that's how I was able to meet Jay and all that other shit. And guess what? That didn't mean nothing because after it was over, I was back to being me. And I was like, wow, that was a great experience. I was popping bottles and I was doing all these things and every, but I noticed something when I was in there. Everybody in this club was staring at Jay-Z. My man Dre was there. And it was like they were just talking to each other. And they were talking about Duce. And they were talking about, you know, back in the day. And Jay-Z probably knew that all these people was around him. Mm -hmm. And once again, my moment to shine happened again when they couldn't get the Duce to Jay's section. So me and this other white kid that had uh, the same sweatshirt on, because I also learned that too, you go to concert, go buy the merch, Go buy the same merch that the people that work with the concert is wearing. People think that you're like them. You blend right? in. <laughs> blend in, right? So this cat, he's like, yo, can you help me get these bottles over there? I could have took them bottles and ran. Yeah. But to hold three bottles of Duce above your arms. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Here you go, Jay. Here you go. Got you guys. You want, to, you want me to open them? Got you. I got you. Don't worry. <laughs> and, um, Bottles of Ace of Spades because of it was a picture opportunity. Yeah. But I was being of service. I was yeah. being of service with a, ha with, a, with a cheerful spirit, bro. Like, and it had to get tipped. And I didn't even let it stop there. Because of my knowledge of how people move VIPs, I could tell that Jay was getting anxious and kind of ready to go. So he leaned to his man, like, y'all y'all ready to go? And then everybody started talking to each other. The Emory was there and everybody. Um, they started, I started to see layers of people started to leave. Yeah. So I literally walked out one door, walked around the building to the door that I knew he was going to come out of. And when they walked out, I was there. Damn. To help facilitate, get Jay to the, you know, to the, uh, to the truck, you know. Because yeah. there were some fans out there. And I was just there, you know. You know, you want to take any, you want to take any bottles of Ace of Spades with you? And I did take a bottle, by the way, because that, that was, <laughs> yeah. Who would I did get I one out of bottle, too. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was right, a bottle. You know, shout out to the Rock. <laughs> shout out to the Rock. I did get one bottle, uh, a Duce. But then I remember Prince Williams, the photographer out of ATL, saying, Jay, can I get a picture? And it was Emery. Uh, uh, AG and Jay Z, and I was standing behind him, so he took like two pictures, 
So in my mind, I'm like, fuck it. I just do the deuces up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I done photobombed this picture. And the next thing it was on, like, all the websites. And people were calling me, like, yo, how you going to photobomb Jay-Z picture? Like, they were mad at me or some shit. Like, like, <laughs> hey, like you like no one, like you Yeah, nobody like, asked, how'd you get that close to Jay-Z? Yeah. They were just like, oh, how you photobomb Jay-Z? Like, but real talk, there was nobody on that sidewalk but the people that was on that sidewalk. And they had a good conversation. I was able to ear hustle and listen to that conversation. And it was, once again, genuine relationship. Yeah. Emery just got out of jail. Man. Yo, AG, this is my, my dog, Emery. Hey, Emery, this AG, he owned he own the compound down in Atlanta. You know, B, you know, he was a real New York type. Like, and yeah. he was bigging up Alex. You know what I mean? Yeah. And JD, he's popped into Alex Club. You know what I'm saying? Probably, and Alex probably didn't have to spend no bag with him at all. You know hey. what I'm saying? So it was all off a of relationship. So, you know, I love, I love to make it happen. That was my moniker, Mr. Make It Happen, for a long time. Yeah. Money, just like anybody else, excites me. Yeah. Um, the art of the business, the art of the deal, the fact that you came in to buy that $69 mattress, but I don't know, you got an adjustable frame now. <laughs> <laughs> free, some free pillows and stuff. Right. You know? That excites me because you did not expect that, but you really deep down inside wanted that. Yeah. Um, and, and when you have these celebrity chefs, like shout out to my man Tobias, um, he down, he's the head lead chef for 13, which is James Harden's new restaurant down in Houston. You know, he started out of a food truck in D.C. Yeah. But he was so passionate about his meals and his craft. He has soul fever that eventually Lil Baby was like, yo, you got to cook for me. And then you look, you, oh, you cook it for James Harden. And then James Harden's like, yo, your food is so good. I'm going to open a restaurant with all your dishes mm. and left him in Houston by himself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey. So the only thing that Houston has to remember James Harden is his restaurant. Hey, shout out to James Harden doing his thing for the first couple games in uh, Brooklyn. Man, he's a beast, man. This is, between him and KD, you know they're going to the finals. Yep. And Kyrie going to come back. And Kyrie has no problem facilitating. Let me take some pressure away so these boys can rest their legs. They're going to do that whole thing. They're going to, like, take games off. You know how they're going to yeah. do. Yeah, take they, the game off. They're playing what they got to do. They're playing mm -hmm. for the playoffs. That's it. But, you know, people got to make a thing of it. So, uh, it's all good. You know how it go. They got to make it a soap opera. But Yo, Kyrie, Kyrie, Kyrie knows. He has that yes. eye, baby. Yeah. He knows. He knows. Hey. Yep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he knows. I love and Kyrie. That's my dog, man. Shout out to um, shout out to my man, DP on the Beats. He did a song for Rick Ross called Kyrie Irving. Oh, yeah? The kid is from Fayetteville and has worked with Lil Uzi Verge, Chief Keith, and a host of other people in the industry, mm -hmm. all out of Fayetteville. And, you know, when, I, we, when it started happening, man, and we was realizing that, yo, we didn't have to leave Carolina to, you know, make it you know, to, to excel in life, to get the money. Yeah. We didn't have to leave because we knew what we were talking about. Right. You know what I'm saying? And when and people come to you. Yeah, like like if God was sending them. Like, come on, man. Like I'm I'm from DC while they get on. The city I come to, J. Cole come from. Yeah. Like that's divine intervention, bro. Like I don't and, and it was manifesting that night. When Cole was like, yo, you missed my performance. And I'm like, yo, I came to see Wale anyway. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, wasn't, I ain't make no bones about it, but I thought about it, Yeah. you know, intensely over the years. Like, wow, you know what? Carolina and D.C. had a connection. Yeah. Them boys are still friends today. Yeah. They still rock, you know what I'm saying? Had beautiful songs together. Hey, the, um, the genuine connections you was talking about earlier. So the Genuine connections, you know what I'm saying? Like, so... You know, I don't know Drake. I don't know Kendrick Lamar. I don't know those guys. I know J. Cole. Yeah. I know Wale. And that's that's all I got. I know Kenny Burns, you know what I'm saying? But like a man told me, it's not about what you know, who you know. But the next level of that is who knows you. 
Okay. That is the next level. That's like the ultimate chi, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you can walk into the room and you don't have to introduce yourself. Yeah. That shit dope. Because they saying something about you. Yeah. You know, think about all the people we just name drop. Yeah. Kenny. Kenny ain't talking about us. I'm talking, we talking about him. Yeah. He influenced me. I'm proud that he influenced me. That's big bro. Yeah. Like, like, I remember being at work and he was doing a seminar called The Dream is Real. And shout out to my wife. She got me a, a, a one of them Kindles or like the Amazon book one time when it first came out with his book already downloaded on it. And mm -hmm. I remember all Christmas Day, I just read his book. Yeah. And I was able to you know, answer my own questions like, oh, you work with Mariah Carey too? Oh man, he did this too? Damn, he did this with Monica? Oh, he did this for... No wonder it all made sense. He was a connector. Yeah. And back to the book that the consultant made me read, The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell, it spoke about mavens and connectors. The mavens are somebody like your Kevin Durant. Good at what he does, you know exactly what he does, the best at what he does. Mm -hmm. But you got to get him with the Mr. Kleiman or, you know, LeBron James with Rich Paul because they're the connectors. They're going to say, hey, LeBron, hey, KD, you need to know this guy. Mm. KD ain't trying to hear from nobody else. But if Rich Paul says, hey, LeBron, you need to meet this guy, LeBron going to meet that guy. Yeah. Because he already trusts. Rich, Rich Paul's, Paul's him. you know, look, you got me this far. You got me this many deals. You help me get this money. You help me get that. You know what I'm saying? Why would I not listen to you? Right. My first consultant and my only consultant to this day, and I say this very true. It's really real. It's not my wife. It's my mother. Yeah. My wife is my partner. My consultant is my mom. Right. She saw me in my smallest, weakest stage in business, which in life is business, you know, the business of life. She's knew me, nurtured me. She helped me learn how to develop relationships. She used to tell me I was very lazy, so therefore I never wanted to be lazy. She told me I was mean, and I never stopped being mean, but... <laughs> I, you know, it is what it is. You know but I mean. she made me she made me want to smile more because I didn't always have to be, you know, if I got mad, I didn't have to stay mad. Yeah. If I, if I was mean, I would know how to shake that shit off and be nice. Yeah, move forward. Yeah. You know, move forward. You know what I'm saying? If I was wrong, I, you know, I was wrong, I didn't move forward. Um, but she also, I remember telling my mom, hey, yo, calm down, mom. I'm not up. <laughs> like, whoa, whoa. That's what she said it. <laughs> yeah, my mom, my mom, my mom, she, like she says, she doesn't take any tea for the fever. I don't know what that means. I also never knew what I have kill you mean, but she was instilling things in me, you know, that yeah. you, just because it's Saturday doesn't mean that you're supposed to sleep the whole day and do nothing. Right. Like, let the rest of the world think that the week has ended. But you keep this is when my week starts. She's a real estate broker. No internet. You couldn't look at a house. I had to come pick you up and take you to the house because I knew where the house was. Yeah. While my son was left alone to fend for himself and make amazing breakfasts and stuff like that and clean the house. And when mother would arrive, I would have her brunch. You know what I'm saying? With mimosas prepared. We're everything, house clean. Where are you, Kevin? No cell phone, but she knew to find me where? At that basketball court. Yeah. She knew she could find me either at Summerfield or Middleton Valley basketball court. She knew it. Yeah. And, or, or as I got older, my mom would be coming home. Hey, mom. Kevin, where'd you get this around lawnmower from? Well, Miss Charlotte was letting me cut her grass, and then I was like, can I cut my grass? Yeah. And then on the way to cut our grass, I cut the neighbor's grass and the other neighbor's grass. Probably, you know, I used to make so much money off her one lawnmower. 
I felt bad. I had to buy her blade one time because she's like, my blade is getting dull. I don't know why. Kevin, are you going over um, roots and stuff in the grass? <laughs> you like, like nah, I'm cutting, I'm, I'm cutting a lot of grass. Yeah, I'm cutting the whole neighborhood. It's cutting the whole neighborhood. <laughs> don't mind me. So don't mind like me. Talk, like we talked about. With, and, and no overhead, too, because she wasn't charging me to use her equipment. Yeah. So you It was all business. profit. You learned business very early, man. And um, All profit. Yeah, like we talked about your, your your mother, she was your your first representation of of what a hustler is and what business is and a consultant is and all that good stuff. And like she my mom I don't think she eighty that. She she's seventy something. She never told me her real age, so I don't I try to keep up with it. She, yeah. But she was born in nineteen forty eight and she still does real estate. Mm. Got her a new laptop, little Google Chromebook for, for for Christmas, so that she could, you know, be be with the times, you know. Amen. Think about it. She there was no internet when she was selling millions of dollars of real estate. Now, now she got a little extra help. I know she's killing it. Yeah, it's so, and I love it because guess what? Consultation. Yeah. How many young ladies have you seen on the gram? Yeah. Looking flawless, but selling real estate. Right. Where do you think they got that from? Yeah, that's the picture right there. That's the picture. That's my mama right there. They got it from her. Yeah. They got it from her, and I was able to expose, like, yo, you can do this. I mean, I don't know all the, the girls, but they are, are some of my f close friends are multi-million dollar producing real estate agents, and all I did was consult them, and my mama consult them a little bit, and... They won't ever say, I ain't learned nothing from Miss McCrevin. Mama Mac taught a lot of people how to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, be pretty, be fine. But when you open your mouth, I know what I'm talking about. And I'm going to get you the best deal and close you on this home. And we're going to get you to the settlement table. Because, as you know, as a homeowner, it takes a lot to get to that settlement table. Anything can happen. Yeah. You know, oh, we ran his credit three three days before. Did you really have to go finance a washing machine? It's for the house. <laughs> really? Did you have to? Right. You know, so I learned all these things. And, and I'm still in school for real estate. You know, I say that. Even though it doesn't take as long as I've been taking. You know, I kind of made a couple million dollars in mattresses you know, on the way. <laughs> and selling cars and stuff. But yeah. I, learned, I learned that while I was in real estate school, some of the things that I was participating in, in real estate and helping people like yourself and anybody just like flip properties, like that wasn't really the most, um, put it like this, being a real estate agent, you have to answer to the commission. Being K-Mac and giving you some consultation and telling you to go down to the courthouse <laughs> and, and, and um, bid on a foreclosed property. Ultimate, like, ultimate hustler, man. Hey. Nah, man it's, like it's a, it's a gift, man, and I, at the end of the day, I don't ever want to go back. Wait, was that ever broke? Hold on. I don't think I've ever been broke. But I've been, I've had some tough times. You know what I'm saying? No lie. Yeah. There's been times where, like that poem said, if you can lose it all yeah. and, stoop, and stoop down and build it back with worn out tools and never breathe the word of your loss. You know what I'm saying? Like I've lost, but never told anybody in these 10 years. Yeah. But my goals, I learned that my goals were not with everybody else's goals. My goals were my goals. And right. one of my goals was to build my mama a house. In 2004, we built my mama a house. Yeah. I graduated from college in 2003. That was a goal of mine. I didn't have that many goals. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. You know what I'm saying? You <laughs> thought I was going to be at somebody other day. Like, I thought you were going to be on TV. I'm, you know, TV ain't gone nowhere yet, you know? Yeah, it's still there. You know, like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe I... <laughs> Sorry, now I don't want to say it like that, but like truly and truly, there was a different plan for my life. Praise be to the most high, had a different plan for my life. And every single time I tried to go in the direction that was the popular by the man or what you would have did yeah. if you was me, it never worked out. But then some fluke over here would happen that seemed so easy to do. And I would do it, and it would flourish with it. And I'm like, wow. Why would I ever do any hard things ever again? Right. I should only do things that come easy because 
it comes easy because I'm using my talent that God gave me to watch all these do these things and talking to people, talking for a long time, for about a time, you know, you know, dealing with irate customers. It became a gift and a curse because you would walk up to people and they would think that you're always trying to sell them something. So they're kind of standoffish. You tell somebody the truth, they think you're lying. You, you know, you tell, I mean, just the amount of people, like I've been with my, been with my lady since like, like 2002. Like I met her in 02. We got married in 2011. But there'll be people that think like, I'm trying how to do y'all. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I'm good. Like, you know, <laughs> now, trust, now, trust me, I'm happily. But I know everybody because it's my job to know everybody. Right. And if I'm trying to fill up a club, I'm going to do a California sausage party? Nah. <laughs> right. I'm trying to get all the youngins in there. I know who you want. Yeah. If she the baddest and you think she the baddest, I'm going to make sure I become her friend. Because when I invite her to said engagement and you know there's a possibility she's there or when she posts on her page i'm going to this you're coming yeah. and when you ain't buy your early bird ticket you're gonna pay at the door and that's what it is so like i found a way to live life for a living like my man kenny burns say and also capitalize off of good times because a good time had by all is money for me <laughs> right you know, because, right. you know, but a good time has to be had by all. And there's all types of ways to, to have these good times. Fundraising. Oh, my God. CIAA? I wasn't at day parties. I was partying with people that were 65, 75, 80 years old. But they yeah. was raising $250,000. Hmm. Smarter, not harder, man. You know, so they, if, if these people are raising this, and there was a guy named Wayne Branch. Shout out Wayne Branch. He's a bro. Seven State alumni. Guess how he made his millions, Rob? Yeah. Copying machines. Selling copying machines? Selling copy machines. Big copy machines. Like, yeah. whatever size copy machines you need, he has it. From the small one to sit on top of your desk to the one that got to sit in the corner, you can store the paper at the bottom to the one that can print banners. You feel me? Because he saw there was a need. Yeah. He you saw know. there wasn't a lot of brothers doing it. Yeah. But there was a lot of brothers that were successfully owning and operating major businesses that need what? Copy of machines and fax machines and stuff like that. Man. Simple math. And, um, you know, when I met him, I did not know what he did. But I knew that Tom Joyner knew him. Yeah. And I was like, wow. I look up to Tom Joyner. And you know this guy, so I need to know this guy. And I met him, and he introduced me to his mentor, which is a guy named by Fred Waddell. And Fred Waddell is still my man. And I re-met Fred, shout out my man Victor Pace, who made me meet him again and really connect. But when I connected with Fred Waddell, that's when I learned the art of fundraising. Um, Fred Waddell, did, he went to the Army. He did not go to college because he couldn't afford to go to college. He instead went to the Army made money and paid for his brother and sisters to go to college, okay? But he loved Federal State University so much so that when he made his money as a mechanic, mm -hmm. he invested his money into Federal State. Somehow, some way, he became the president of the FSU Foundation, the, 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 con the conglomerate that actually built the apartments that were adjacent to the university and Bronco Square, you know? He was in charge of that whole foundation. And because I met him, and because I was cool like that, he let me in the circle. You feel me? Yeah. The first meeting was at a bar. He ordered gin with tonic. Can't lie. But I remember that, you know what I'm saying? That's his yeah. drink. You got no man drink, I guess, you know? Yeah. Well, I always stayed to the cognac side, so I got my cognac, you know? But whenever he would call me, he would only call me if he was in town. And he expected me to meet him at the bar. Mm -hmm. Because why? I was his project. Mm. He saw something. He knew he was getting, he knew he was getting older. Yeah. He knew that he didn't want to do it the way he knew it needed to be done. But he knew a good time had and must 
be had by all. <laughs> and if they are having a good time, they're going to write that check. And writing these checks to our HBCUs is how these HBCUs have stayed in alive. If they don't get the checks, they don't get no nothing. They don't have. They can't stay open. Yeah. They can't keep the. They can't keep this professor or that professor from going to Ohio State or going to University of Nebraska and teaching there or going to Duke or right up the hill to Chapel Hill. They can't stop them if they can't pay them. Right. So athletics. And things like that would, you know, it was like a doorstep to any university. And he understood that parties and ball games and party going after the ball game and party before the ball game and just party, party, party. Yeah. That's how people used to like to write them checks because I'm so-and-so when I'm in my city. Yeah. But I know when I come from Fayetteville State Homecoming, when I come to CIAA, I'm party with Fred. I can let my hair down. He ain't going to have just anybody in the party, so I ain't got to worry about seeing my little nieces or nephews. I ain't got to worry about seeing my coworkers because you got to be somebody to know somebody that be somebody to even get into this party. You right. can't pay at the door. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can't pay at the door. Yeah. And he had that type of flair that I was like, okay. And everybody has to find that. This dude is old as I don't know what. But I want to be like that when I'm old as I don't know what. Yeah. And he told me the only way to do that was to stay humble and to be of service. And there's times when I don't want to put on this shirt and sell mattresses because I don't have to. I can just continue to play the stock market and or maybe liquid, liquefy some of my assets or something. I don't know, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, do a mile. I got a mile. I got money. <laughs> Right. You know what I'm About time for me to start asking my mama for some money. You know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> um, but what drives me is the fact that every day somebody does need a mattress. And every day I can teach somebody how to sell the biggest, baddest mattress for twenty nine dollars down and take home the day, you know. You know, you know, what was so astronomical, I was able to simplify it and then I was able to teach somebody how to simplify it and then sit back and watch them do it and make money, bro. There ain't nothing better than to watch somebody flourish that you poured yourself into. Your love, your time, your affection, your patience. You know what I'm saying? You you poured it into them like mm -hmm. a child. You got a kid. You poured it into your child and you see her do something. Yo, yeah. there ain't nothing like it. Right. So when I do that for whomever, whether it was J. Cole, Wale, even Kenny, because Kenny said, that, hey, yo, I'm here to inspire even the, the celebrities. But when I told Kenny, yo, I know I can get that shoe, he was willing to give me his whole title. How, yeah. how, I was, I was, I was in awe. I'm like, okay, right. Yeah. You like, nah, bro, you, you had your 35th party at the Versace Mansion. <laughs> I can't compete with that. Yeah. But, you know, he told me something, and I wish I had his cards. Kenny, if you ever look for those cards, I did. They fell on the ground <laughs> during his speech. Like he has some cue cards yeah. that he was reading from. And you picked them. I had to. It was a souvenir. You know, I take some. <laughs> so on one of them, it said, "Hey, respect the greats, but be respected at the same time. Never walk to Brooklyn for cheesecake." Mm. And of course, he was talking about Diddy making them band. Yeah, I remember and where are all those cats at now? They ain't nowhere. Nobody respects their grind that they went to buy cheesecake from Juniors nope. and walked to Brooklyn. <laughs> at all. And no, I mean, you know, but we respect Kodak Black. We respect Bobby Schmurter not talking, sitting down, you know what yeah. I'm saying, taking that time. We respect Tip taking a year and a day, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because we can, you know, we we have loved ones that have been either incarcerated or whatever that we know. It's a family thing. Every the whole family go through it. You know what I'm saying? When somebody ain't home. Yeah. So, like he said that, like always respect the grades, but be respected by them too. Like don't be don't be no ass kisser, man. Don't be no brown noser. Let me sure they respect you too. Yeah. And one of the other things y'all talked about was um. 
define what the next level is to you. Mm -hmm. Define what it is to you. So not so, to anybody else. Let me ask you. My this. next level, yeah, my I next level was I, I didn't want to live in a corner. I wanted I wanted my wife wanted a, a craft room. I needed a garage to store my lawn care equipment. I had goals, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was my next level. Before my next level in 2004 was to build my mom a house and graduate on time in 2003. Yeah, everybody was like, oh, you on the radio, you should be doing this. You go to the, yeah, that's cool. But I used those relationships with radio to meet builders, to find the per perfect subdivision. Mm. And my mom was up in Maryland selling her house. The market was going crazy. She got a balloon price she was able to get for her house. So she took it, came down to North Carolina, dumped a little bit of it into the joint, took out a nice little small mortgage, you know, let's yeah. rock. The next thing I know, I'm picking out ceiling fans and doorknobs <laughs> and cabinet knobs. You know, I didn't know you pick out the knob for the cabinet. Like, you can do that when you build your house. That's crazy. Pick out the towel, pick out the, pick out the bathroom lights, you know what I'm saying? That was exciting to me. And that, you know, and I think I might have been 22. Yeah. I don't know how. I didn't even know it was a blur. I'm in my 20s. I was able to build my mom a house from the ground up. That, that, all that, brick. That, mean, Pink that brick. means you was getting busy, man. That's all that means. You was getting busy, right? But yeah, I use her, yeah. most of her money now. I ain't, gonna, I, ain't, I ain't build it and, like, pay for it. I ain't, I ain't, oh. sauce, I ain't <laughs> saucy like that, you know what I'm saying? But I, we, we built her house. Like, yeah. that was my mom's dream. Yeah, my mama did everything for me, and I vowed that I was going to pay her back, mm -hmm. and that was what I did. I found the builder. I was there with the hard hat every day. You know what I'm saying? And I even let her down because one day I didn't go. The one time I didn't go, they didn't put her garage on the side. You know, she wanted a side load garage because we were drunky sometimes. So when you put the garage door up, you don't want the neighborhood to see what's inside. Yeah. She wanted to be able to go to the side and door open up from the side. Yeah. But of course, once they put those beams up, it's all she wrote. Right. So the day, the one week or whatever, I didn't go by to check on the house. The builder got slick and gave her a regular garage. Oh. And because it wasn't in writing or some other stuff, you know, that's yeah, crazy stuff. You know how it. Yeah. But, you know, I learned a lesson. And, you know, when stuff started happening with the with the house, you know, you know, the house been over for 14 years ago, like that. Right? Like, but yeah. when stuff started happening in the house, you'd be like, oh, wait a second. I guess this thing wasn't made to last more than 15 years or 10 years. Yeah. But being a homeowner, and we, when that way we went to the settlement on the house, bro, I remember taking a picture. I don't know if I can find it. If I find it, I'll send it to you. But I took a picture. I'm like, oh, mom, we got to take a picture. She was so excited. We signed on the house, and there was no Facebook to hold the key up yeah. and, and brag, I'm a homeowner. Yeah. There was nothing to do. And then after we bought her house, I think I had bought a house, too, before she bought her house, because I was like, I'm going to do it, too. So I ended up buying the house. I didn't buy it the right way. I ended up paying too much for it. But I was just excited that I was, because they say 90% of the millionaires go – come through real estate. So I'm like, shit, let me put myself in the best position that if I were to sell all my properties right now, that I would be up. Yeah. And I wouldn't have to work. I wouldn't have to work ever again off of decisions I made when I was a young man. And that's why I encourage people now to save. And I'm the worst at saving because I shop at Saks. Yeah. <laughs> and sweatpants are 275 off. You know what I mean? Sheesh. Sheesh. Man. Hey. Go ahead. Hey. Hugo Ball, baby. Talk your shit, bro. Yeah, I got to do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's cause a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, you know, light, light start. But when you, when you in that lifestyle, you can say, all right, these are the things that excite me. These are the things that motivate me. It's nothing wrong with having that. I don't yeah. drink a lot. I don't watch a lot of TV. I don't play video games. Yeah. I don't have rims on my car. I don't have a fancy sound system in my car. Um, I don't 
you know, I don't have a lot that other people do spend their money on. Yeah. But I will spend my money on two hundred dollars sweatpants. Yeah, you spend it on what you you find value yeah. and spend money on. Yeah. Because I'm always in sweatpants. I'm always in chill gear. And here's the thing: when I started doing consultation, I noticed something about the consultant that inspired me. He was always in like Tommy Bahama shirts and flip flops. Yeah. Had the rolly on, had the rolly, <laughs> but he was always comfortable. Whereas everybody else that he was consulting, you know, white shirt, blue tie, Brooks Brothers, you know, you know, really about it yeah. business wise, suits and everything. But they were listening to this consultant who was chilled out. And there was another consultant, I think his name was um, uh, Jerry, Jerry Clifton. Jerry Clifton, he was a consultant for the radio stations. And he would, Jerry had a parrot, a pet parrot. And he'd be sitting in the radio station with a parakeet on his shoulder <laughs> talking about, so why are you playing that song so much? They're not playing that nowhere else. Yeah. Or, hey, you know what, Valentine's Day, this would be a great promotion to do. And PDs all across the nation would listen to Jerry Clifton, his ideas for certain radio promotions, for certain things that just made sense. And he would give them a book like this thick. And it was Clifton Radio Pages. And from the first month of the year to the last month of the year, he had a promotion that your radio station could do. Mm. But you got to pay for it. Got to yeah. pay for that book. Yeah. Got to pay for that book now. Yeah. And it's going to cost you, but don't worry. I'm going to make enough books for all your disc jockeys, <laughs> all your program directors. And he let, when I saw the book, I was like, this is something that was made at Kinko's. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. But it's the but information. He took, it was the information that was valuable. So who gives a shit if he has a parakeet on his shoulder and he lives in an RV driving around? Yeah. He knows radio. And if you want your numbers to grow, you might want to listen to him. Yeah. So when I saw the parakeet and I saw the flip flops and the Rolex, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna be sneakers, sweatpants, t-shirts, shelling. Yeah. Beard on my face, you know what I'm saying? Hair on my head, chilling, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You? Chilling. Like you're not like every millionaire I met that really rocked with it. Like I met Michael Jordan's brother, right? I sold him a car. Yeah. Retired Sergeant Major. Jordan is what you address him as. Yeah. They told me, hey, you're in there with Michael Jordan's brother. Don't say nothing about Michael. Okay. How do you do that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm filling out the little application. I'm like, I need your address, your email address. And I think his email address was something with a head. UNC23 at Yahoo.com. Like, I was like, come on. I gotta say something now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I said, hey. I ain't gonna lie. Your last name is Jordan. You got UNC and 23 in your email address. Is there a correlation? Just ask him. Uh, let's just say uh, I got a pretty famous brother. <laughs> and he leaned back in his chair and he spoke no other word of his brother. Mm. Why? Because he's Sergeant Major Jordan and he didn't need Michael to do any of that. He's done. Yeah. to provide for anything that he's provided for for his family. He got his mansion off of being a command sergeant major, retired. You know what I'm saying? So he didn't need a coast. And I'm now it was just so much like I mean he had Bobcat, he had a Bobcat bumper sticker. It was like, come on, man. Like hey, he had too many, too I, many Easter eggs, not to ask. Like Yeah, I couldn't bro, act like you're asking me to ask you. You want me to ask you, but you don't want me to ask you. That bro, his son came up, his son came up and it was like Dad, I don't want an X5. Mom, can I get an X5? Son got the X5. Hey. But guess where the son goes to school? Where? University, University of Wilmington. University of North Carolina, Wilmington. Why? Because that's where grandma lives. Oh, wow. <laughs> and where's Michael Jordan from? Wilmington. Where's mama live? Wilmington. Wilmington. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's like even as big as Michael Jordan is, I've been in the elevator. Uh, I didn't get to get on the elevator. I was about to get on the elevator, but they told me you can't because, you know, it's just these guys. <laughs> yeah. You're not one of them. You know, you can't get on the elevator with us. For sure. I'm, um, but he 
when I met him, it was halftime of a Lakers versus Bobcats game. And he's studying the 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 um the stats, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Going off like, yo, these boys got too many turnovers and look at his steals and look at the offensive rebounds. You know what I'm saying? It's like he's so intense. Yeah. And I was warned, yo, if you see MJ in the tunnel, don't say nothing. Yeah. But I had to say something. Like, <laughs> what up, <dog? laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because every time somebody told me not to do something. You or did. somebody said you can't, it's probably because they can't. Yeah. They're not a Q dog. I am. <laughs> what up, Mike? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's my frat. I can holler at my bro. I can yeah. holler at him. I can say what's good with the brothers. I can do that. You can't. What he, hey, what'd he, what'd he say back? You know, he you know, he threw it up real quick, you know. He yeah. cool, cool brother, but he went right back to that stat sheet. Yeah, he was focused. He wasn't even playing. Yeah. He was the owner of the Bobcats at that time. <laughs> but he was, it was about business. And it was, yeah, I was the fan and I was coming to enjoy basketball, but he got billions of dollars on the line. Yeah. Every turnover, every steal counts. If we lose a fan because the Bobcats or, you know, the Horns now they suck, that's one season ticket holder I lost. Yeah. That season ticket holder is how I play, how I pay for this yeah. entity inside. Or that's how I pay this person's salary. And, yeah. you know, when you're in business mode, you start thinking like, wow, man, you know, if you're not making me money, you're costing me money. And I got to save every penny. Yeah. You know, constantly, how can I save a dollar? Okay, Lowe's, I want you to sponsor us. So, Lowe's, I'm going to give you all of this signage on top of the scoreboard, around the rim, it's going to say Lowe's everywhere. Yeah. Nobody will ever think about Home Depot after they come to a Bobcat <laughs> game or a Hornets game. They had to sell that, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So that, you know, it's just branding, you know what I'm saying? Like, you sell it. Selling and branding and branding and selling. Like, it is what it is. And also consistency. Mm-hmm. You know, my wife used to joke. She like, you coming home tonight or tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Like, what is that supposed to be? <laughs> well, after midnight, it's technically, technically tomorrow. And she knows that, yeah, I had to be at the club, but I just really had to be there for the remote, which was the live broadcast to get everybody to the club, which is usually over by the time the club is going down. Yeah. It's usually when the club first opens. So I had this, I had this, I had to, keep my cat to keep it professional. You know what I'm saying? Like it would be like my Saturday would be on the radio, come hang out with her for a little bit, might go jab, get an artist from the right from the airport, come back, take the hotel take the artist to the hotel, spend more time with her. Just to let her know, look, look, this is real business, you know? Yeah. Go to the club, artists do their thing, take them back to the airport. On the way back from the airport, I'm picking her up because the artist might not even really use their room. Yeah. Now we got the continental breakfast in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> the come and she up. was in college, so it was blowing her mind. Like, this dude got yeah, the come up. all the time. How did this dude got this fine ass hotel? I'm like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't worry about but it. But I do check out what until 11 o'clock the next morning. Yeah. And it's four o'clock in the morning. So like, <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it, girl. Don't worry about it. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But also just also to just also to build that trust because we was in an industry, or I was part of an industry, I would say, that you know, marriages don't really last. Yeah. Um, you your your uh infidelity rate was super high, bad decisions constantly being made. Yeah. And I had to have somebody that was going to grow with me that said, hey, you know, well, that's not a good look. Yeah. Well, I saw, I saw you. I saw you like that picture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't make me have to you know, kill nobody. <laughs> yeah. Because like, once you like it. <laughs> like, OK, OK. Stalker. <laughs> OK. Man. Right. Like it was um, it was really hard. And a lot of the decisions I made were because of, you know, the the relationship that I was in, like you know, how much did I value 
her. Yeah, pretty much. That's what it was because, you know, like I never really worked with female artists because female artists don't know how to keep their clothes on. Some some of them they do, but some of them don't. You got your Cardi B's. Hell, Beyonce don't got her booty out at the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? And if you notice, everybody that's in those circle of the girls is somebody that ain't interested in the girls. You know what I'm saying? Right. Me, why should I put myself in that type of atmosphere? Yeah. Hey. Like, oh. We just me and Cardi, just me and Cardi, we just friends. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Friend. Babe, 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 she needed some lotion on her knee. <laughs> how, she, how else? She did one knee, I did the other knee. Come on. <laughs> how else she gonna get lotion? How else she gonna get the lotion on her leg? She ain't trying to hear that. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, man, everything is everything full circle. It happens for a reason. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited to see what's about to happen. Yeah, all that, all that was we just talked about was past. Yeah, but it's prepared me for what's about to come, and there's so many good artists out here that really are good. You know what I'm saying? And I yeah. feel like I got a handle on a couple of them, and if they're nurtured the right way, they're gonna go they're next too. They gotta be a new Andre 3000. Hell, yeah. Baby's the new Lil Wayne. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it gotta be somebody next. So yeah. I'm keeping my ears and eyes open, bro. Yeah. All right. So, man, it was good to uh, have a reunion and chop it up with you, bro. All day, man. We're not, we not going to let it go another 10 years. <laughs> nah, man, we ain't going another 10 days. What you talking about? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I need, I need, I need rebranding. Look at See how I changed the, the name, the, the, the spelling of the name? I see that. I see yeah, that. Because, you know. Oh, yeah. You know so, so talk about the spelling of the, uh, for the, the spelling Q. For the Q. The Shout Q. out for the Q sci fi, you know what I'm saying? Like came the, the other way it was spelled like the Mac, like Mac and you know, you know, pimping type, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, I'm like, I don't think I took enough time when I crossed to, to really be all the way out. Cause I was about business. I was already on the radio. I was, you know, I was doing, you know, my thing. So mm -hmm. Tom joined the Ricky Smiley, doing the bros I was hanging around. Like I was doing, the, yo, and my bros, like, like call them. And I want to get back in. I want to reconnect because I know with COVID, there's been a disconnection. There wasn't any homecomings. Was, you know, we got people that are, uh, you know, uh, we haven't heard from, and you know, we looking for them. You know, and I think that if that becomes the norm, we will lose the traction that we had. Right. We would were, we were make a good traction with our network only because I knew people. I would see people at least once or twice a year, homecoming, CIAA, you know, whatever, throughout the year, social media. But we got to really start checking in on our people and know that you have a gift that somebody else probably need. Don't keep it to yourself. Reach yeah. out to that person. If it's just posting something for them, if it's just telling them what you learned, about, or well, you got a cousin that's involved in that, or you got a friend that's involved in this, you know, pass it along. Keep the keep the communication flowing, yeah. the network growing. Wow, that's that's a round. You got to keep the communication <laughs> flowing hey, so the bars. network keeps flowing. You feel bars. me? Because you can't be selfish with it because yeah. the relationship people know. Like, who wants to be your friend if you keeping it all to yourself? And you can't I take it with you. With who. You can't, yeah, take, you can't it with take it with you. You can't take it with you, man. We and I can't wait till we can get people back in clubs like that for a long period of times in, in North Carolina. I turned forty March 9th. So, you know, I got a lot of pressure on me to have a big party. Like for yeah. how, Sway? Yeah. I'm gonna have a big party. Now you gonna have a, a big COVID free party. Right. But don't worry. It's we'll find a way. K Mac will find a way. I got too many I got too many young guns. Yeah. That I got too many young guns that already do the party scene that all I got to do is let them know the date and it's a wrap. And I would just, you know, lend my face and image to the flyer <laughs> and promote it. And uh, hopefully I can get some positive return on my investment. Yeah. It is. It, hey, what you tell me earlier, man, manifest it. Ain't no, hopefully you going to do it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Hey, look that, that phone call right there. Yeah. Probably my wife. She's called yeah. my phone like three times. Yeah. I so ain't answered one. Cause we don't want you. Call we want you to stay happily. So what we're going to do is... got to be happy. Hey, bro, I appreciate it, bro. I appreciate 
the gems, the knowledge. You know, I don't like to be the smartest person in the room and around. You see, she call it back to back, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, care. people like you, people like you, I ain't never gonna be the smartest person in the room. But I appreciate you, bro. Go get that phone call. Will you be sleeping? I'm doing it right now, man. <laughs> hey, it's all love, man. We are gonna connect. I'm gonna hit you right for sure. back. For sure.